Hi everyone, um, we're going to work some practice problems with Lewis structures and electron geometries and molecular geometries, um, but we're going to work them with some fake elements like you might see on your quizzes coming up, alright? So you will always be given um, some kind of table with elements, their valence electrons, and electronegativities. And so this is no different from what you've been doing in your lecture notes, um, where we've learned that like we have one valence electron, two valence electrons, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then also working with each element, say carbon, would have an electronegativity of 2.5 and four valence electrons. Okay, so same type of skills, um, but just to um, make sure that you're not able to look compounds up, I'm going to give you some fake elements. So you're going to refer to this um, as you draw. Okay, so I'm going to work um, one or two of these for you just so you can get an idea of how to work these um, fake element problems. So first we always want to be able to draw the Lewis structure. All right, so I have fx2 mx and mx is going to be our center atom. I will bold the centers for you or tell you. So mx um, has six valence electrons and an electronegativity of 2.4. So I don't actually need electronegativities very often in the Lewis structures, um, but I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Um, remember, it helps you in the future if you keep those unpaired electrons kind of in a position where they can bond. And then I've got Fx, I want to have some similarities, or sorry, symmetry, um, and Fx has one valence electron, so I'm going to put that right here. All right, um, form single bonds. Check, are there any unpaired electrons? There's not. Um, so that means that my Lewis structure is done and good. All right, now number of electron groups is gonna be around the center atom. So I'm looking for one, two, three, four. That's one atom, two atoms, a pair, and a pair. So that's four electron groups. Four electron groups always is an electron geometry of tetrahedral. This is just like the real <laughs> molecules we've been working on and always leads to a bond angle of 109.5 degrees or around that. All right. Now I want to think about how those four electron groups are going to orient around um, a center. So they're going to form a little tetrahedral um, electron geometry, right? And then the molecular geometry is going to have two atoms and two lone pairs or two ghosts, okay? So I've got two atoms connected and then two lone pairs. So that's going to lead me to a molecular geometry that's bent. And so if I redraw this, Mx is still in the middle and now I have it bent down to this Fx and I could draw the two lone pairs up here. So I'm looking at kind of this structure is drawn here. All right. The next thing you want to do is figure out if it's polar or not. So then you're going to come back to your um, chart here and write some electronegativities down. Okay. So for MX, our electronegativity is 2.4. For FX, it's 2.0. So I find it helpful if I actually write those all down. It makes it a little more cluttered, but it makes it easy to figure out what's happening. And then remember these electronegativity differences are going to be the same even with these fake elements here. So nonpolar covalent bonds 0 to 0 0.4, you don't draw any kind of bond dipole. If you have a polar covalent bond, that's where we're going to say electrons are shared unevenly. And then if I have an ionic bond, we won't see any of those in this part of the unit. Those were only in chapter 3a and that was for example where we saw whole charges, not just these uneven sharing of electrons. Okay. So here I do 2.4 minus 2.0. That gives me an electronegativity difference that is in that nonpolar bond region. So that means I don't draw any bond dipole on this bond. This bond I evaluate separately, 2.4 minus 2.0, 0.4 or less. So therefore I would say that this molecule is nonpolar. It has no polar bonds, so it can't be polar overall. So I would say no, it's not a polar molecule. All right, now let's take a look at one more. Um, let's think about something that is an ion, okay? So I'm looking at these little charges. There's like a negative there. There's a negative, a negative, okay? So you wanna look at those. Um, same exact process, all right? So um, G is gonna be my center here. So I've got JX, GX, HX. I wanna go refer to my valence electrons. So J has six. 
G has four and H has five, okay? So J has six, so I go one, two, three, four, five, six, leaving the unpaired electrons kind of towards the middle. GX has four and then HX had five. One, two, three, four, and then I'll put the fifth one over here. Now, next thing I wanna do is add those extra electrons on. So a negative one charge means I get one extra electron. And to figure out where I'm gonna put it, it always belongs best where the electronegativity is smallest, okay? So JX is 3.6, GX, the electronegativity is 2.4, and H is 3.0, all right? So that lets me know then my extra electron is going to go to the most electronegative or most electron wanting element. Um, now I can connect my bonds, so start with single and then look around, see if there's any unpaired electrons across from each other. So those can connect, unpaired, unpaired. You can always check that you've got an octet on everything, so two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, and two, four, six, eight. And then don't forget with ions, you need some brackets and that charge written, okay? Um, so that would be a correct Lewis structure here. Number of electron groups around the center. If I look at GX, I've got a triple bond, but that only counts as one group, and then a single bond. So I've got two electron groups. That always leads me to an electron geometry that is linear with 180 degree angle. Um, and then when I go to draw the molecular geometry, we know that a linear electron geometry always leads us to a linear molecular geometry. So let's just say I redraw this a little bit more neatly. Same exact structure, same electrons, same brackets. Um, and I already have the electronegativities over here. Um, except I don't need those because it's an ion. So if you have an ion, don't worry about doing the bond dipoles or molecular dipoles. All right, so that is um, how you're gonna use those kind of fake elements. I highly recommend that in addition to the regular chapter three worksheets, um, you do all of these as well. That'll be really good practice for your quizzes. And just confirm that you understand the concepts really, really well.